Hey, what's up everyone? Fuzzy Juggernaut here, and today I have a build for you that I use also in the Dark Zone. Um, before we get into it though, I posted a video yesterday about my shotgun build and all that, but I actually deleted all my content from all my fights, gameplay, and recording, so I had to re-record these. So I'll have also content coming back out, game content uh, coming back out this week for you guys uh, on this video um, but this one's actually a spin-off of my Kronos build with the shotgun but instead we'll be utilizing SMG and it's quite simple just switching out uh, one piece and changing another piece from uh, armor to red but before we do that I'll get into the specialization and the whole build and everything so we're gonna be rocking the fire all specialization uh, it's no surprise there. The med kit's ridiculously strong and overpowered, so it really helps us build out a lot. And then you're just going to want to stack into uh, your SMG damage passives and whatever secondary you choose to run. I'm running the Pestilence on this one, um, but you can run whatever you'd like. Uh, for our first weapon, we're going to be rocking the Tactical Vector SBR. This is going to give us 71.8% uh, SMG damage and our total damage, sorry. And then our core attributes are 50% SMG damage, 21% critical hit chance, and 10% critical hit damage. Uh, the Tactical Vector SBR is probably my favorite and one of the best SMGs in the game. You can go for others though that can work for this build. Um, I rock fast hands for the talents on this which is critical hits at a stack of 4% reload speed bonus. Max stack is 40. Um, you can go for strain or whatever optimist, whatever you'd like. We're not going for like a lot of crit on this build, but because of the SMGs and their secondary uh, core attributes, we get quite a bit of decent critical hit chance, so you can put strain or whatever you'd like on there, um, like I said. But I choose fast hands, especially for this build. For a secondary weapon, we're rocking the Pestilence. All of you should know what the Pestilence does. Um, we're having 15% LMG damage, 11% damage to target that cover, and 6% damage to armor. And it gives us the Plague of the Outcast. I'm not going to go over the, the talent, what it does. It just puts a debuff on people. So uh, it's really strong, and it's a good secondary to use. For our sidearm, we're going to be using the M45A1. Um, this you can use whatever you want. I, I just this is one of my favorite handguns in the game, so that's why I use it. 15% pistol damage. Uh, there's no pistol damage put into the actual uh, passive in the specialization, so that's why it's a little lower. But it's still a good pistol. Hits hard. 4% um, damage to armor. 15% pistol damage, and I have strain on this one because I use it on one of my pistol builds. For our face mask, we are rocking the Gilligard, uh, three pieces of this, so it's going to give us 5% total armor, 10% health, and 1% armor regeneration. We're going for armor regeneration and armor on this build, along with two reds, so it's four, four blues, two reds, um, and then we have some critical hit damage and critical hit chance to also boost the build up a little bit, but the main thing we want is our armor regeneration and our armor. Uh, so for this one, our core attribute is almost maxed out, it's 163. 8,000 uh, armor and then our minor attributes are going to be 100% scanner pulse haste You don't have to use the night watcher. It's just what I had with the best rolls on it. So you can actually use um, Whatever uh, Pieces you have and any gila ones that aren't night watcher Preferably one you can get a different role than the scanner pulse haste on uh, and then for our second ones max uh, armor regeneration that it rolled onto there and then I have a disrupt resistance so they have a harder time breaking my shield and my um, uh, jammer pulse and jamming my skills. For our second piece we're going to be rocking another Gilligard. This is our second piece which gives us the 10% health. Um, this is only at 139,000 armor so preferably you'd like it higher but this is the one I had and I wanted to roll our talent trauma on there. Um, our core attributes are critical hit chance and critical hit damage. Um, I think we're actually sitting at close to 50 or 55 percent on this build on critical hit chance and decently high on critical hit damage so it helps out so we can pump out that damage while being tanky and having survivability um, and then uh, our uh, 8 point or point eight eight point one percent bleed resistance on this uh, for the mod and then 
you can actually put something else if you want whatever resistance you want um, I'm just trying to get all around resistances everywhere a little bit somewhat so especially with all the hives in the game then for our talent we're rocking trauma this applies blind to an enemy hit in the head cooldown is 30 seconds and the main reason we're using this is applies bleed to an enemy hit in the chest cooldown is 30 seconds so even if you're not decent with your shots you should still be landing body shots and when you hit them in the chest it's going to apply a bleed to them and that bleed is really crucial for this build and it works really well with our backpack talent all right for our holster we're going to be rocking a golem gear we want a two piece of this because this is going to give us 10 percent uh, status effects and then one percent armor regeneration uh, on this is 156,000 armor. It's not fully maxed out. This build is not even close to maxed out on a lot of pieces, but it does the job. So whatever you have will work. That's similar to these pieces. 5.6% um, critical hit chance and max armor regeneration is what I rolled on that one. For our backpack, uh, we are rocking the Sokolov Concern. This is going to give us the 10% SMG damage that we got for our SMG, which is our primary weapon. Um, instead of running the shotguns, we're running SMGs on this build. This is the almost maxed out weapon damage, 14.8%. Our minor attributes are 6% critical hit chance, which I maxed out. And then our armor regeneration is almost maxed out, but it's at 4,875. And then a critical hit damage uh, mod on here for 11.7. Um, you can rock whatever you'd like on there but that's the mod that I I prefer and choose be since we're at close to max critical hit chance on this build so um, for our talent is wicked this is the second part of our first talent that we're getting from our chest piece now with wicked applying a status effect increases total weapon damage by 18 percent for 20 seconds so this is going to increase our weapon damage while they have bleed on them uh, this is really strong especially for a tankier build like this so you're applying that bleed on them with the chest shots and then you're also getting increased weapon damage by 18 percent for 20 seconds and the cooldown is like nothing so it's not it's i mean well it's not nothing it's somewhat of a cooldown but it's not it's not bad and that increased weapon damage really comes in handy and boosts our smg damage up a lot so you can just melt people, especially with fast hands, your reload time is nothing. So it's just one clip and then boom, another clip and they're done. Uh, let's see here. For our next piece, we are rocking Golan Gear LTD. Like I said, this build's close to my Golan Gear build. Instead of right here, though, having a blue mod, we'll have a red mod. So this first piece gives us a 10% status effect, which was on our holster. Now this is our second piece, so this is giving us 1% armor regeneration to stack with the other 1% armor regeneration we're getting from the three-piece Gilligard. Uh, our core attributes, our max weapon damage is 15% damage, and then uh, our minor attributes are 11.1% .1 critical hit damage and 4.8% critical hit chance. If you can get them higher, that would be great, but we are stacking the critical hit chances and the critical hit damages and the armor regeneration and armor on this build to get that good amount of damage that we need with the tankiness that we want. All right, and for our knee pads are our third piece of Gilligard, which is going to give us that 1% regeneration, armor regeneration. Um, these are at 168,000, almost maxed armor, and I rolled max armor regeneration, 4,925, and then uh, it has a max 6% critical hit chance on it. Uh, so you want three piece, the Gila, which are these, and then you want two um, Golan. And you can switch this however you have them around. Um, I preferably like to run two blues though, so I can get those extra resistances that I want. And then um, on the backpack I ran a red. And you could flip this around if you wanted to use a versatile like on some of my other builds and unbreakable on this one you can. but. Honestly, this Wicked with this uh, Trauma works really, really, really well. Um, you don't have Unbreakable, but you just got to play smart. You have the tankiness to come in and out of cover and take some damage. And you have your shield, which is boosted up, which I'll get to in a second. So, And then you have your One Piece Sokol off, you know, that's giving you the SMG damage plus the red mods on it. So it works really well. Uh, for our skills, we got the Crusader Shield. Um, this is going to be the shield from the firewall 
specialization. The shield's really good, as I said in all my other videos. If you're going to stack into blues, you might as well use it because you get so much out of it. And since we don't have anything really into yellows, it's pointless to run anything else. This shield, I know it can be cheesy to some people, but honestly, you got four blues, man. That's going to give us 40% active regeneration, 150% shield health, and 20% holster regeneration. You can't beat that. Um, our active regeneration is at 55,000. Our health overall in the shield is 3.5 almost, and the cooldown is only 20 seconds. So you get the shield back quite often. Um, and then our holster regeneration is almost 80,000. Our... Uh, also, with the shield, you get a modifier too, a damage modifier, so every enemy in front of you is actually going to increase your damage uh, while having your shield equipped and shooting with it. So, every person standing in front of you is going to increase your damage, each person, and it increases the damage of your uh, teammates behind you too, if they're behind you. For our, mod or for our mods, we're going to be rocking 4% shield health, 8% shield health, this is the mod you get from the uh, specialization firewall, and then a 4 our 4.1% deflector damage. This is going to stack in with the damage modifier that we're getting from the specialization shield that we're rocking itself. So though it's more weapon damage you're going to get with your weapon that you're using with the shield for enemies in front of you. For our second skill, we're going to be rocking Jammer Pulse. And obviously I use these on a lot of my builds just because they're really good. And I, use, I utilize armor and damage on most of my builds. This one's... Particularly good though because this can jam people's uh, stinger hives and their bleed rollies all that stuff It helps out and can jam their shields uh, It's a almost a must-have half time in the dark zone So uh, you can rock whatever you'd like if you like defender drone or whatever on switch one of them out or whatever ones you want But these are just what I prefer. I'm not saying you have to rock these This is just what I like to run on most of my builds uh, so this is going to give us 30% cooldown, EMP effect duration is 6 seconds, and radius is 20 meters, charge time is 2 seconds. Uh, for our mods, we're rocking 9.4 charge speed and 9% effect duration. For the watch, like I say in all my videos, you guys probably have more points. I haven't leveled anything up to it really that much. Um, I haven't done the farm. But just weapon damage, armor, and then uh, hazard, and then... Uh, Reload speed and some into ammo capacity, which does help. And then uh, skill damage, because I have a skill damage build on this guy. And then also the uh, skill health for skill builds that are healing. Um, you'd actually probably want to run the cluster grenade. I always forget to save the cluster grenade on my build when I do this. But you can run concussion if you really want. But the cluster grenade is really good. For our stats... 71,848 weapon damage. Um, we're sitting at in PvP damage though, 31,613. We're at oh max crit, 60% critical hit chance, and then 73% critical hit damage. And you can run strained if you really want to, since we're at max crit, that will give you more critical hit damage. Put you probably like 110, 115 or something like that um, up. But I don't feel that I need it, and I like fast hands just because I can reload within like a second maybe less like it's super fast just melt people down hitting those chest shots putting that bleed on them and doing that damage and then reload real fast and hit them again also while you have a shield so we got 50 percent headshot damage and now let's go down there we go uh so almost 1.5 million armor um it's not too bad we're sitting at uh 49,159 armor regeneration you could get this a little higher like i said if you had all max armor regeneration rolls on there uh, it would be ideal, and it would probably put you at, like, I think 51, 51 or 52, something like that. Uh, but 49,000 is good. Anything over 40 is pretty good. Um, the higher you get it, obviously, is the better and the more damage you can take. Uh, we're sitting at 307,000 uh, health. And then, let's see here, 50% pulse resistance. Obviously, you get that from most of the passives from uh, any of the specializations. Um, and then our hazard's still low, 3.6, which is fine. Like I said, you don't, you're gonna sit there and try to take hella, hella damage from everyone, but it is good um, to have hazard, but we don't have it on this build. I don't feel that I need it. If you want hazard, you can stack, take away certain things that you want. But honestly, everything I have on this build, I feel like if you take the critical hit damage, the critical hit chance, or the armor generation away, it's gonna hinder it. So it's up to you, but 
for me, I personally like the armor regeneration. Now, if you don't like armor regeneration and feel it does nothing to you, because I know there's some people out there that feel that way, then by all means, go ahead and stack into hazard instead of armor regeneration. But that also defeats the purpose of the pieces that we're rocking too. Uh, you could switch it around how you like. You'd still get some armor regeneration. You could have more hazard protection also. So a bit of both. And then 11.7 bleed resistance. All right, I'm pretty sure I got everything. If I didn't, just let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments also. Um, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. It greatly helps the channel and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good day.